think the emotion is going to be lost on anyone involved in this. Uh, there's no roadmap for this, but uh, you know the players are younger. I mean, I think the biggest issue they have is confusion when they look at us old guys going, "Who the hell are those guys?" Um, but I think I think they'll be fine. Coach K is really good at getting uh, his people to focus on the task at hand. Uh, I think it'll be an emotional scene, but I don't know that it'll necessarily. It's like senior day. Yeah. You know, those those things cut both ways, and usually it's rationalized afterwards. You know, they'll say, well, you know, senior day they played they played great with the emotion, or the emotion took a toll on them if they lose. I, I don't know the answer, but it's it's certainly uh, an issue of first impression. It's different than it's different than playing for a championship or anything like that. It's a it's a standalone game that has significance beyond the game so you know i don't know that 50 years from now people are going to necessarily remember the result as much as they remember the, the significance around the game jay what do you remember about the 1983 acc tournament loss against virginia nothing uh, my therapist <laughs> my therapist said i don't have to recount or go through that um you know i was watching a game last night uh, a team that has had a, a difficult year uh, look like they kind of are running out of gas, and that's what that's what I remember from that is in the second half when you know the ball was rolling downhill, the snowball was rolling downhill on us. It, it just kept getting worse and worse, and uh, when it was over, you know obviously the score was lopsided, um, but you know that that score was brought up a lot by Coach K. It was on the scoreboard of the first practice the, the next year on October 15th. It said 109.66 on the scoreboard. So it wasn't something we, we were we were inclined to forget. Some thought that that might be it for him, and there were some people pushing for that around the year. Did yeah, how do you think they feel now? <laughs> Did you worry as a freshman that your coach was about to get pushed out? What were your thoughts just about his, his future? It was, it was an issue. I mean, we... We certainly were aware of it, and we thought about it. And you know, there's more than a couple times where I called home and said, "What do I do if they fire him? I'm not staying here. If they fire my coach, I'm leaving." And my dad had to tell me, "Just play. There's nothing you can do about it. Just play." And, uh, and, but I do remember the following year when uh, he signed an extension. Um, he came into the locker room and said, "I just signed an extension, uh, so everything's good." And we just went out and practiced, and that was the end of it. But it took until then. I mean, we were really good the following, you know, that year. But uh, it was it was definitely there was an air around here, and, and the truth is, we didn't care too much for our fan base at that time because they weren't supportive of him. Jay, what, what was the what was Cameron like your freshman year, and then how did it gradually build? as the program got more and more successful for home games? Everything gets gets better when you win. So uh, there was far more attention, both media and fan attention locally and nationally as we you know, climbed up in the rankings. I mean, I don't remember what we were ranked my sophomore year, but we were you know, a nationally ranked team. And then we were ranked number two my junior year, number one my senior year. Um, so there was a lot of interest. And, and obviously, the fan support went way up. And, we didn't care. I mean, it was great. You know, we didn't care that they weren't on the bandwagon at the beginning. As long as they jumped on, that was good by me uh, or by us. Um, but it was a different, totally different feel. Like when you go into a game and your fan base hopes you're going to win, and then you know later years, two, three, and four in our group, you know they they believed we were going to win every game, and that was a different. That was certainly more of a fun experience. Can I follow up on that a little bit? Um, I'm going to take you back to your sophomore season. The UNC game, you lost that one in Cameron. That was the one where Dean Smith hit the scoreboard. I'm sure you remember that. But that seemed to me like the game that you guys let everybody know that you were coming. That you know Duke kind of had arrived, and you beat them in the tournament later. Did you ever feel there was a certain game, or was that memory or that game? Was there any point that it seemed like you knew you guys were coming together and? You know, that that game, and oddly, that game was not televised, which is kind of unheard of for Duke UNC and Michael Jordan. So. I mean, we knew, I don't know uh, about turning points, right? Uh, but I kind of felt like the second game we played, them and Carmichael, that double yeah. overtime game, that we believed we could beat anybody, and we thought we should have won that game at 
regulation and didn't. Um, so that was a crushing loss. But right after the game, Coach K came in and said, we're going to play them again, and when we do, we're going to win. And he meant the next week, and, and we did. Um, so it, it certainly, if, if we weren't true believers before that, we were then. Um, and, but it was, that was an, it, it, like the innocent climb of the program. Um, you know, the first time that I did anything as a player, or we did anything as players, was his first time. So my first NCAA tournament game was his first. Yeah. And my first ACC tournament championship was his first. And first Final Four was his first. It was, uh, there were a lot of firsts back then. Yeah. Have you spent any time uh, in the Emily K Center? Yeah, a lot. I was on the board for a while. Yeah. Uh, what do you think that has come to mean to him? I mean, it's sort of changed and evolved over the years. But what do you think that means? to him that it's there and functional and contributing in the way it is? Oh, I mean, it's it's profound that not only the, the tribute to his mother, who uh, he was incredibly close with and still calls upon, I think even now, um, for inspiration, but uh, the fact that it does so much good in the community and it gives back, um, I think that's really important to Coach K and his entire family and, and to everyone in the community. Uh, you know, he's a people see him on the sidelines and all that stuff and they see this intense competitor but he's he's a very giving generous person and that's that's evidence of it I think. Is that as much a part of his legacy in some ways as the basketball stuff quote unquote? Yes but it's not it's not what people are going to say first. Sure. Maybe we should you know we should honor teachers and firefighters and public servants more than we do but you know, the, the headline is, is what he's done with his record and, and all that. It's kind of like when, when coaches talk about their graduation rate. You know, it's, that's supposed to be more important than wins and losses, but it's not uh, in our society. Jay, you were, you were on staff, I believe, in 91. I was, there, I was there 90, 91, 92. Yeah, so 91, ACC tournament final, you get rocked pretty good by Carolina and Charlotte. I've heard over the years that Mike came on the bus and as you guys were going back here to Durham and told everybody they were going to win the national championship. Is that how it, is that how you? Yeah, that it? was said. Um, you know, obviously everybody was down after losing the, the championship game and, you know, you lose into your rival. But, um, but that's true. Like, he's always been after the season ends and that's the end of the season has been we're zero zero so we're just like everybody else but you're not dragging the last result win or lose with you it's a completely new experience and i think it was my senior year we approached the tournament a little bit differently where i think we were the number one overall seed and he came in and and we kind of talked about the bracket and back then it was 64 teams that had gone to 64 my junior year in 1985 and he had, he had pointed to the opposite side of the bracket, like, look at all those those 32 teams, and basically said, who cares? He says, only one team's coming out of there, and we'll play them on Monday night. We don't have to worry about any of that. And he handed us all a bracket. It was a four-team tournament called the Greensboro Invitation. And we played Mississippi Valley State, State, and then the winner of, I don't even remember who, we played Old Dominion. Okay. Uh, but I don't know, I don't remember who they played. Um, and it was, you know, kind of simplified it. Like, all we have to do is win a four-team tournament. And, and then the next week we did the same thing. It was a, a four-team tournament in the regional in, uh, in East West New Jersey. And so I, I honestly, I, I'm a pretty good student of the game or just, you know, historian of basketball. I don't really remember what happened in that tournament. Uh, I can't tell you who upset this team or who lost or who won because we didn't care. Um, and that, that was a, I don't know if he did that every year after that, but it really made it easier to wrap your head around that big of an event, that it's really not that big for you. All you have to do is, is not, you know, knock down the obstacles in your way and, and you're there. And it's a four-team tournament. So it, it made it a lot easier to comprehend uh, rather than, you know, thinking about the enormity of it. Did you remember going through David Robinson in, in the regional? We didn't really go through him. <laughs> Our guards went through him. I didn't go through him. He went over me. I remember that. Jay, Jay, I'm wondering if, if you've been in contact with any of your old teammates who can't be here, and if they've asked you to 
deliver a message to Kay on their behalf? No, they're all doing that on their own. I have talked to, to I've talked to a number of guys, and, and uh, it's been, uh, for all of us, it's been a wonderful experience, you know, kind of a trip down memory lane, and it, it's been one of, of mostly gratitude more than loss. Um, you know, if you think about it, like I've known Coach K since I was 17 years old, and he's been the coach at my school uh, since then. And so I don't really know a time that he's not been the head coach at Duke. Uh, and for me to have had him as such a profound influence on my life at the same place for so long, who has that? You know, maybe Duke and Syracuse players from the 80s can say that. And you know, you tell the players now, you know, if you had your choice, would you rather play for him now? Probably because you know, he's gotten so much better. He's a better coach now than the coach I played for, and that's as it should be. Every you know, he gets better as time goes on. But uh, I've had him for longer than they have, and uh, and that's a that's a pretty good thing. So th that that's been most of it. You know, they, they tell a couple stories and have a few laughs, but uh, it, it's a lot of conflicting emotions. We all knew this was coming, but uh, you know, intellectually you know it, but emotionally it's it's a strong feeling.